Zeds are one, Zeds are one, Zeds are one. Zeds, both Zeds, both, both Zeds. All low, all dead, all dead, all dead. Big wipes. Look at BK, look at BA, look at BA. I see you, anyway. I'm trying to help you. Two dead, two dead, two dead, two dead, two dead. Soft one. Farmer dead. Glittering one. Dead. Yeah. One. Yeah. Dead. Median 200 con greatsword hatchet. Let's get right into it. Here is the greatsword seal tree. Now, as you can see, we have a pretty high investment on the left side and minimal on the right side with rupture. That's something that a lot of people question and we'll go over later in the video. But for now, you can see we take both giant slayer and heavy blade. We take swift onslaught, very important for chasing people. Could we will come back, which is going to be so core cool for our stam regen. Aggressive shift. This is actually really important as well because, you know, Relentless, we want to be in Onslaught when we Relentless. And Skyward, that being our one and only way into Onslaught, is not enough. And of course, Step and Strike, which will just passively give us a lot of damage, as well as Stamina. Relentless is absolutely key to the build, especially in combination with the Adaptive Rush. The route from this, obviously, is undodgeable whilst you are rooted. And that is why we get so many big bombs. That's why we get so many good combos, good finishes. And Skyward will be the way that we get into Onslaught if we want to get into Onslaught the fastest. As well as, of course, you know, a stagger, a good bit of AoE damage, and a nice disease on top. Now, on the right side, we take this simply because, you know, we've got to choose one and it's it's better than the, better than the other. Um, blade Honing will passively give us a lot of damage. Same with Unflinching Blade. These two actually give a huge amount of damage, especially once you stick on a target. And then Roaring Rupture, an incredible ability, highly underrated. You know, 8% fortified for each person to hit on top of giving you a cleanse. And then most importantly, you know, a 10% weaken, but uninterruptible for five seconds. This allows us to be around bruisers without being scared and allows us to use abilities like Skyward Slash in AOE situations where passively, you know, getting hit by any POD, anything at all when you're going in Skyward, you know, it's going to completely ruin the ability. So absolutely massive to be able to get quite literally, you know, full stun immunity, because that is exactly what this gives. Now we'll look at the hatchet here. Pretty basic skill tree. On the left, we simply take all the passes required to get to Deftify as well as all the Berserk. But on the right side of the tree, as you can see, you know, there's a couple decisions to be made. We go for Infected Throw rather than Feral Rush. I, I don't think Feral gives me too much. Infected Throw is really going to passively help, you know, the army just with AoE diseases and weakens that you can just, uh, you know, uh, provide on point even without being on point. The only two other things I'd look at is Rejuvenating Crits, which is going to help with your Stam, as well as Adrenaline Rush, which will also help with your Stam. You can change Exploitation, which is a pure damage bonus, to one of these. If you want to get both, you're going to have to give up a social distancing group, which is possible to be done, but not ideal. I mean, I absolutely would not give up aerial transmission. And if that was the case, I'd much prefer to be running Feral Rush. But this is my hatchet tree. This is our attribute tree. As you can see here, we are 200 con for the incredible level of tankiness that we get. You know, especially when you combine that with you know, Defiant Stance, as well as Rupture, the, you know, the stun immunity and all the fortified you'll get from it. It makes you incredibly tanky. And then just split the damage between Strength and Dex. You need to be 150 Dex minimum, and then the rest in Strength for those of you who don't have your armor upgraded with Umbrals as of yet. So 150 Dex, and the rest in Strength, once you pass 150 Strength, just start pushing them up at an even rate.
I'll quickly run you through my gear and then talk a little bit about it. So, here you go. As you can see, Freedom Shirking Brazil on almost every piece, apart from this, which is Relentless Freedom Brazil, Elia version. We've got a Slash Protection Amulet. We've got a Leeching Invig Punishment Slash Damage Ring. We've got Doom's Chance Earring. An Attunement Strikes Keenly Jagged Greatsword. And an Attunement Enchanted Keenly Empowered Hatchet. And of course, Brutal Detonate, absolutely key for the build. Now, what would I change? Well, in an ideal world, this would actually be an extra freedom or even an extra shirking fortification. The Elia version is kind of a, a tier two perk for me right here. But apart from that, I would absolutely stay full freedom, shirking and resil. You can see I don't have the ideal medium equip load. It only has a very small impact, but for me, it was just a whole lot cheaper. Hence why I am this, but of course, if it's possible for you to go the heavy chest, light legs route, I would do that instead. The amulet slash protection just outclasses champs most of the time, unless you are fairly certain you're not going to be worried about enemy greatswords. If there are no enemy greatswords, I will go over to champion's amulet. For the ring, this is a very important ring. Invig punishment and slash damage is absolutely key. Leeching is just my ideal third. You could even take a hearty as that third. And then Doom's Chance is just an easy, very strong uh, ring to go. I take Regenerating. It's possible for you to take a Purifying Toast Earring instead. That would also be very good. On the Greatsword, Attunement and Trenton Strikes. That is your two perker. That is incredibly important. Your third perk, Keenly Jag is my favorite, but you can get it Keenly Empowered. You can get a Weapon perk to open up an extra slot on your armor. You can take keen speed you can take plague strikes a lot of options for your third perk on the greatsword and then hatchet it doesn't matter too much you don't spend too much time on the hatchet i prefer max damage hatchet with an emerald in there just to make sure if someone's low and i don't have the time to get a full swing with my greatsword on them i can one swing them with a hatchet or use a hatchet throw and just try to get as much damage in as possible as far as the rune zones are concerned i am just going maximum damage on these and then dot gems on these making sure to have two different dot gems and this is my armor setup, people. This is what I'm running. And again, the only thing I would really change on my setup is I would go to one extra freedom. If you can only do two perkers, go Brazil and either Shirking Fortification and then three freedom or full freedom. Freedom is going to be very, very important for you. So why the build? Why 200 con? What do you, what do, you do in wars? What is your position in wars? There's a little bit of build theory. So, why are we 200 con? Well, the level of tankiness that you can achieve with this, with Rupture, with Defiant Stance, in 200 con, combined with your medium armor, essentially allows you to go between an unbelievable tank, someone who will be able to survive, you know, more than anyone else can within the category of kind of medium 200 con armor. You are incredibly tanky. You got your Berserk. You got your Death Defy. You got your... Uh, your ability to get out of there get in there so the 200 con is really a level of tankiness while still having the ability of once you're in onslaught to do the damage you can do the burst if you catch people off guard they will die they will absolutely die now we're not there to chase the main point of this build the main role in a war is the disruptor that's what the ties will come under it's about taking ground holding ground and disrupting enemies within that area because of your tankiness, you can choose wherever you want to disrupt. You can be a disruptor in the enemy backline, in very high density zones. This is what you're able to do. So, as you'll see in the, you know, war gameplay in the background, I'll be passively moving into areas with a huge amount of enemies around me. And they either kind of ignore me, because they know they don't want to waste time, or if they do try to put, put you know, time onto me, I can just move back, reset, re-engage, waste their time. So the whole idea is, we hold a zone, disrupt them, don't let their healers heal for free, force them to use sacreds on themselves, heals on themselves, force them to ask for peel, get everyone away from it. And you know what? Sometimes you'll just connect with someone else, with a friendly or catch them off guard and you'll end up getting kills. But kills are not what you're meant to be, you know, it's not your main reason for that. You're not there to be top of this kill scoreboard. You're there to consistently hold area and stop them just playing it for free. Now, Something that a great sword allows you to do, especially in this 200 cold medium roll, is kind of do a bit of everything. You know, it's, it's a little bit of a jack of all trades. And certainly the focus is going to be disrupting and primarily disrupting healers. But you can enter clumps with it. With Rupture there, 
You know, with that stun immunity, you get the ability to step on point, to help out with the clump. You can use your relentless root and root people in clumps. Now, you don't want to be clump fighting the whole time. Not by any means. But unlike other people, which will play a similar role, maybe you'd call them assassins, we can both go for the, okay, the enemy's bows are right here. I can dive the bows. The bows are scared of me. I can punish them. I can kill them. But I can also blow up a clump. And I can also pressure a solo target. But I'm also tanky. So it's a little bit of a jack of all trades, but certainly the focus is going to an area of high enemy density and sticking around the enemies. Now, in order to get kills, in order to really increase your pressure, you need to be willing to let people get away. That's one thing that can be frustrating about the build, but that's important for people to understand. Letting people get away is okay. What the whole idea is you want good uptime in your swinging, good uptime in your onslaught, because people in a war will move towards you without realizing you're there. They'll get in a clump from, a, from another friendly grav. They'll have to move away, use their stamina, and end up next to you. And you change target, as you'll see in a couple clips later. You know, often I'll be swinging one target, and then I'll be holding a heavy. That person will light roll away, and my heavy will then track onto another person who's come near me. So the whole idea is we keep a momentum going of just swinging, swinging, slowly moving around. And if we displace everyone and there's no one in that area, shift around, move to the next section, look for, hey, there's four healers over there. Let's go start displacing these guys. We see a lot of people, you know, a lot of enemies running away at low HP over here. Let's position ourselves there. So there's a lot of finishing going on. There's a lot of holding ground going on, pushing into enemy ground. You'll see in the clips coming up, there's times I'm used to, you know, lead the engage. If we're entering in fort, you can be the first to enter. If we're needing to wipe out the assassins, I can be the first to enter that. I can be that tank role and I can lock them down. And if they ignore me, if they think, hey, oh, he's just a tank, he's the first to enter, well, then you can punish them. The same they start looking at the others, then you can get your onslaught stance, you can get your heavies and punish them. So they've kind of got to look at you. You're both the tank, but you're also the pressure provided that they can't just ignore you as any other tank they may be able to do. That's the point of this build. It allows you to do everything. But the important part is you don't try to do everything the whole time. You don't try always dive clumps. You don't try always uh, rush down the enemy assassins. You focus on your main job of holding an area, keeping people locked down, pressuring all the people, specifically the healers in, healers in that area. And then when you see the opportunities arise, you see assassin group coming a little bit close. Oh, we can do that. Or you see, hey, there's a good grab. There's a good clump. You know, we can help on that. We can rupture and the sky would into that. Or point sticking up. We need someone to step on point. You know what? I can come and step on point. So it's very important that you understand you can do everything. That doesn't mean you should be doing everything all the time. Focus on your main role. That is getting your heavy swings off, pressuring people, finishing low HP targets who come to you, but not over chasing. Disrupt the enemy. And then everything else is about min-maxing. That's what this build is. Okay, so the first clip here, we're just going to move around, poking some healers, when they're too far away, we're just going to look to the next target, wanting to get into Onslaught, see an opportunity to get a good rupture, give me a lot of fortify, so I don't need to worry, I'm actually going to be missing a lot of swings, it happens a lot, but you just stick with it, make sure you get into Onslaught, the second you see an opportunity, a nice, uh, relentless rupture, you're going to get the root, we're going to collapse with a couple other people, we together. just swing on anyone that's close, it's a bruiser, it doesn't really matter, be willing to swap targets, we change from that bruiser to a mage, see the opportunity, go for a swing, and a route and that route's going to connect someone else and we're just going to passively be connecting with people yeah, yeah, yeah. next is Place using the tankiness so of the build to be the one to engage yeah, obviously we are tankier than uh, most okay, people on this first. field who are not in heavy going to be into onslaught looking at all these squishies going Switching with my relentless route is going to root them all do some now, damage we're going to get kills off the back of that put into my nice defensive finishes. mode really i can't nice get stunned finishes. from that and we're going to force them all back down Next, we are defending just a back gate. Again, we want to split everyone off using my ult, going in, just be, you know, pressuring them. I'm not going to get kills here, but I'm going to force four people or five people here away from the fight. Just push them back, go back in, reset, hold this gate alone. You're very, very scary. As they come in, just try, get some poke, get into that onslaught. As they pass, we're going to come through them. Notice the healer, the number one priority. Going to follow through, take the healer down for that whole group, and then fall back down to protect the gate we are meant to be protecting on the back pushing them all out now we're just opening up
up pretty normally, looking for anyone we can. Currently on a BB. The BB's going to net shot out of there, swapping over I'm towards the hatch at range, bit. kind of passively yeah. using those abilities. And then we're going to get a rupture off here. This rupture is going to give me nice the stun immunity, which nice allows me to go the skyward, so something I would not be normally able to do because any stagger would take me away from there. But I can now support AoE clumps even briefly because of the rupture into skyward combo. Now we're entering okay. fort from the back here, openly for free. Gonna open up with a rupture, probably not needed. Right now we want to get into onslaught. We're gonna use the skyward and then see an opportunity for a great relentless rush. You know, catching enemies, catching reds stairs, on stairs. when they're trying to run away, move backwards from your team. That's the perfect time to get the root. It's gonna lead nice to so much damage. We're now looking to trade with a bruiser. We need to be a bit wary of the wrecking ball, get a little bit more scared, so we use the rupture to get that stun immunity as well as those fortifies, then back looking for something. And as our HP goes down, we're gonna look to reset. Now we're looking at an entry pick right here we're gonna get into onslaught stance pretty early use our pots get the detonate off to create as much space as we can catch a healer with it look at the repost and then catch the end of the repost instantly right off that we're gonna look to get onto the other healers again we're opening the picks we're trying to open the b get as much as we can not necessarily look for kills but displace the healers now to the next one we're attacking we're pushing around I, again i see a lot of low red hp bars with my ultimate and with the relentless rush we can get them finished here instantly onto the next healer just seeing if we can as much as we can the the stun is going to come out we're going to quickly berserk it throw our disease throw down and then go back towards the point it's a pretty high density zone so we're going to use that rupture to give us our stun immunity and our fortifies and then push on up now looking here kind of on the back foot i'm under a lot of pressure i try find the sacred get my pots going try not gray bar my stam too much and just dodge around we end up in a shower which is pretty bad i'm going to spam my dodge out of panic but then we're going to relentless rush out of there to remove any roots from ourselves and then we find ourselves in a safe position on the heat is once again. Let's go over some core tips for this build. First here, I've talked about it before, rupture, giving you that stun immunity and using it to get offensive. So we can rupture into a skyward to give us a very quick onslaught and then we can even go for a spin right off that so we can actually do a relentless while stun immune through a clump. Very, very good. Very, very important. Our next tip here is using skyward just to get into onslaught you don't always need to use it as a stagger as a gap closer of course it's very good to do so but if you're walking up to enemies and you see an opportunity of hey i need to be in onslaught because i have to get maybe a relentless rush route right off you can as you walk quickly just do your first skyward and then you're in onslaught for quick follow-up very good just before it detonates all right the next tip is to be very fast at your weapon swap to get out of onslaught you know, often you're in onslaught, attacking people, you know, going crazy on the healers. But if you get doved upon, or if you get on the back foot, maybe you get hit by a shockwave, a wrecking ball, you need to instantly switch over towards your hatchet, not only to be able to use your berserk, your death to fight, and to get out of there, but to remove yourself from onslaught. And then sometimes you can quickly switch onto hatchet and then switch back, and then go back onto the front foot, or switch over towards your defiant stance. But quick switching from onslaught to your hatchet takes you off, and then you can go from that to Defiant Stance if you need an extra layer of protection. My next step is very important for min maxing the Greatsword. And that is don't just spam heavies even when in Onslaught. Whilst going against these dummies, spamming heavies will give you the highest DPS. Players are not dummies. They will be moving away from you. And the tracking on light, even when you're in an Onslaught, is often a whole lot better. So my favorite combos to do when I'm in Onslaught would be to light, heavy, light. Or to heavy, heavy light. It will be quite rare, in fact, for me to use a third heavy unless I've got an incredibly, you know, a, a opponent that maybe has no stam or I'm pretty, con you know, sure that they're not going to get away because the third light attack is really fast, really good tracking, but the third heavy is not so much. That's similar with the first light. The first light is incredibly fast and incredibly good at tracking. The second heavy, I will pretty consistently use a heavy when I am in onslaught. And often to get into onslaught, you'll see me first do a light into a heavy to enter that onslaught stance. My next tip following on from that, spam your lights if someone is trying to run away. If all they're trying to do is run away and you're just out of range, lighting will get the job done. Lights will absolutely get the job done. We use our heavies for good bursts when you need to take someone from 100 to 0 real quick. But when it comes down to just a chase in a 1v1 scenario, maybe you're in a 1v1 duel and they are running away, just spam the lights. You'll be very, very sticky and get a heavy off once they are on low stamina and you can guarantee that heavy's going to hit. The next is using your detonate with your relentless root. 
This is why we run Detonate. This is the main core bread and butter combo. If you're not using this, you are absolutely not nearly getting enough value from your Detonates or your Greatsword. So you need to be an Onslaught. And then what you need to do is use your ult. And just before the ult pops, Relentless to hit them. Just before Relentless pops. Because they cannot dodge. This is a route that makes them hard stuck. They can't dodge. So if they get hit by that Relentless, they will also get hit by the bomb, giving you double damage. And often in so many of the clips, you'll see that is how I get the burst. That is how I get the kills. This is the bread and butter combo that you're always working towards with the Greatsword. Very important. You all know that. The next tip is don't be afraid to swap to the Hatchet. You know, the Greatsword will absolutely be doing more burst when it comes offensive. But swapping to your hatchet will be very good for the finishes. That's why I run an emerald over there. It's super fast. You know, if you're not an onslaught already on your greatsword, sometimes just going over to your hatchet to finish people off, as well as giving you the ability to, you know, get your grit immunity for when you need to go into bigger clumps. If I go onto point, I will often get my hatchet out. Because whilst the greatsword will do more damage, the hatchet I can be grit immune. I'll do a bunch of damage from the passives of the more people that are close to you, the more damage you do with your hatchet. And most importantly, is I've got my death to fly right there. I don't need to worry about getting caught in an animation of Skyward and then dying before I can swap, which is often how I will die if I still have death to fly up. Next, let's talk again a little bit about rupture. Sometimes, if you're in a situation you need to use rupture defensively, don't go from a rupture into a heavy. You might be very used to trying to go into onslaught, but be willing to just do light attacks whilst in defiant stance. It will allow you to kind of stay in the fight, not have to switch over towards your hatchet to lose all of the buffs you've just gotten, but also provide a little bit of damage and, you know, help. And in fact, I say a little bit, it's actually quite a lot. Often underrated how much lights do even in defiant stance on this build. Finally, with the greatsword, often take quite a top-down view when you're getting into these heavies. There's a lot of people around you. It's very important to understand where people are. And with a top-down POV, it's actually very, very easy to switch between targets much easier than it is when you are just, you know, kind of looking horizontally. So a top-down point of view when you're around a lot of enemies will really give you the best option of getting that tracking onto different targets one after the other. And there you have it, people. There's my Greatsword Hatchet build. I have personally used this at the most competitive wars in New, New World at the very top level. 2.0 versus Para on the winning side, on the losing side. You can use this in wars, OPRs, 3v3s, duels. It will perform off the charts in every single situation as long as you understand what you're going there to do and how to do it. As for the future of the build, we're expecting that there might be some nerfs to the Greatsword, might be some nerfs to the Hatchet. Maybe they might change how light armor, medium armor, and heavy armor works. When that comes around, I'll try to keep you updated with what I'm doing to the, build, to the build to keep it in the meta, to keep that space in the wall, to keep at the top of the OPR, to keep carrying those 3v3 arenas and winning those dual 20s. I'll let you know. Write in the comments down below if you've got any more questions about the build. But that's me. I'll leave you some with outro clips right here. I'm streaming live every single day. Clodjo W on Twitch. Catch me then, and I'll see you around. Oh my god. Ready? Fuck it. Go. Come, come, come. Get girl! Holy! Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Yes, yes! Oh, oh. Out of Sam, out of Sam. Oh my god, he got it. Out of Sam again. That's gonna be max rend on him. Into another jab. Oh. My god.
netting. No, you're clear now! They're clear now, my detonate! No, the bomb dead! Well, the respawn's bombing. We can't can do this. They need to get the point. They need to put the point. They need to take it up. You can't spend time fucking around here. Get on point. You got A to the respawn. Pit, get on point. Take the point up. That's your only way you're gonna win this. You can't win through the respawn. Stay at the point. I would full funny stack at this moment. Just get on point. You can't survive this respawn wave. Get up, boy. Get up, boy. Guys can take it right here. 42 seconds left in the war. 41 seconds. The respawns are coming in. But no, they took too long. The respawns are gonna be too hard on the event side. I knew they're still here! It's an ambush! How do we pull like mobs that are 30 levels below? Oh my. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, everyone die! Lazy! Stop throwing, please! No! 